This is, has everybody here seen the Eastern Trail Bridge over the Turnpike? Has anybody here been over it? <laughs> Are there people here who haven't been over it? Yeah. Wow. Okay. It's easy. We'll get. To, we'll go to the map. The the Eastern Trail is not just the Eastern Trail. The East Coast Greenway runs from Calais, Maine, to Key West, Florida. It is 30 percent all right already off road. The Eastern Trail is 30% off-road. Uh, State of Maine, uh, from Kittery to Callis, is 30% finished off-road. There's an 88-mile section the other side of Elsewhere. Uh, back in 2002, while we were trying to imagine a finished trail, someone said, why don't we just sign it and do an off-road trail, an on-road trail, and we'll switch it the way they did with the Appalachian Trail, just go off-road as it gets built. And uh, that uh, uh, this is the uh, the yellow is not built. The green is finished. This green is finished, and down here there's about 22 miles of finished trail. There's a map back there showing you uh, how to connect those together. The part of most interest. Tonight, for this audience, I think is this is the bridge uh, over the turnpike. This is the end of the preserved railroad corridor. It's about 19 miles of corridor between those two points. Today, the green, the purple, is the on-road eastern trail that was defined back in 2002. The interim trail. Uh, it's interesting. It was defined by people. From GQ magazine who biked the whole East Coast Greenway as one of the three most beautiful centuries Newburyport to Portland, uh, the whole East Coast. It's just it's a fantastic experience, and it will it will be protected. It's going, it's going to be called U.S. Bike Route One. That bridge is gone. You know why that's being replaced? The political pressure to make sure the East Coast Greenway can run between. <laughs> That's it. Honest. $60 million to protect the Eastern Trail. Uh, and that's the other red bug light mark. That's a finished private trail there. This uh, on the left is Saco River Bridge. This was built right after uh, Maine became a state. We were a state in 1820. This railroad was opened in the 1840s. Now, this is what we've got today go to the parts that are finished. Um, why would anybody invest in an eastern trail? Because of health, environment, travel re reduces congestion. There are a lot of people commute on it to the east, uh, builds communities. You meet face to face, not windshield to windshield. It's amazing the friendships that strike out. I, I never met anybody about 4,000 feet I didn't like. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know that I've ever met anybody in the eastern trail. The economic benefits, real estate sells faster and for 5 to 10% more. And in the Hartford area and the uh, Boulder, Colorado, I'm hearing 25%. I don't believe it. Uh, that being near a trail will cause that big an increase. Uh, it does attract the two highest income demographic groups, birders, the people who bring the, those expensive cameras and telescopes, and cyclists, uh, high tech employees. Uh, are attracted to trails and boost the local and state economy. So who uses it? Just about everybody. Elderly, children, uh, families, the classes in uh, a rubble have a story walk that was built. There are some of the photographers and their very nice equipment. The birders. If you've ever met a bird, those cameras are. They're uh, cost half as much as a good car. Healthy mind. I mean, what this does for relaxation and tranquility and peace is uh, wonderful. This gentleman, Barry Lamar, I met Jim Bucard, I met him on the McKinney Bound River Bridge, and we got talking. He said he lost 100 pounds the preceding year 
entirely, he said, because of the Eastern Trail involvement from Southern Maine Medical Center. He obviously didn't exercise that much. He's got a full-time job. But he changed his whole attitude about eating. His high blood pressure went away. His diabetes is under control. And uh, he's a much happier person. How would you like to commute? <laughs> well, some of the past projects. This is not a bridge. Benefit Public Works built that with a couple of contractors who had some work to support wastewater and the uh, drinking water. And uh, Guy Casaban, he supported the Eastern Trail before just about anybody. Scalo Marsh is probably better known. I moved to be near the DeFossa section of the Eastern Trail. It's about a quarter mile behind my house, along the Nunsack River. Someday that will connect to South Fulton. Right now it's just a dead end section. Scarborough, Old Orchard Beach, over 1.6 miles. Spur Trail to the parking lot. This is the one that you are closest to. Kenny Bond, the one will fit at 6.2 miles, crosses. One paved road at three. And it was um, just a of not, not something you would want to travel there. I mean, you had to walk it in boots. Uh, and uh, that, that is a trout, that's, that's a trout stream. That was before. Now the trout stream is over here, and the DEP was delighted because they didn't think the trout had a very good place to live. Your corridor down here looks so much like that you couldn't tell where you were. This is the Kenny Bump River before. Weathered Iron Bridge waiting to be installed. This, this is one of Jim. You got pictures. That is one of the nice pictures. And then the, uh, the Turnpike Project. It's, uh, oh, sorry. Back up. There it is. It was the first picture we looked at. And I got that. Being carriages. <clears throat> we had over 500 people showed up at the dedication. The uh, had a bag pipe, a turnpike moose. And then the, the most recent section was the 4.4 miles Saco, Stork Academy in the Old Orchard, bridge over Route 1. And again, your, your section looks just like that you saw. You could have to carry, take care of your bike through the woods. Hmm. Before and uh, after, as it, it wraps around Fonk Academy, the school encourages people to park there. The bridge over Route 1, again, weathered iron. Plan date was set a month ahead. The first snowstorm of October it came that night. There it is. <laughs> uh, happy users all along the corridor. Kids, people walking dogs. This is almost out of sequence, but the on-road route has been defined by the state of Maine DOT and by Ashto American Association of State Traffic High, Highway Organizations. That's now dedicated as part of an on-road paved route between uh, Calus and Kilos. So people travel the trail. A lot of skiing going on this winter. Horses. Let me put in a commercial for the main lighthouse ride. The Saturday after Labor Day each year, we have a, a bike ride to raise money so we can pay for posters, uh, whatever. Uh, it, we have 25 mile, 40 mile, and 62 mile in the century, and uh, 
Last year we had people from 20 states and Canada. Uh, there were a couple of, a couple of years ago who flew, four people flew in in a private plane to Alabama. There's a doctor from Annapolis, Maryland who's driven up several times to ride it. Uh, we do have big bucks. Easy to raise money from people who spend five or six thousand dollars for a bicycle. <laughs> One of the other outings that we do, we do lead outings on the Eastern Trail. I think the November full moon pipe led by our number one trip leader. <laughs> he, he marched in Macy's Parade, uh, not Macy's Parade, in uh, St. Patrick's Parade for him. Joe Newhouse at the back of the room. You'll recognize him from the view. We have a new trail guide that uh, was modeled on the one the state of New Jersey did. We blew the socks off. We, uh, that's a couple of pages from uh, the future. We want to fill in the gaps you saw earlier. The, uh, the one I think most people here are interested in is how do we get from Kenny Monk down to South Berwick and we'll talk about going further. I'm going to sit down. I can't reach this to move forward. Oh, sorry. Okay, this section that we showed earlier. Kenny Bones, the South Road, off road. Uh, I'm going, going backwards. I'm going backwards. Yes, sir. Okay. There we go. Okay, this is Kenny Bones, just a couple of shots down the trail. An absolutely gorgeous place. And how did Kenny Bones get the trail goes through the one? Town wants to put in a park in that area, incorporating the woodland around it. But it looks like the Romans showed up 2,000 years ago. The top of the embankment is way up here in the air. This is shot from the embankment. Came on Whitten Road. There's a lot of road crossings. If you were to ride the Eastern Trail, this is testimony to the Department of Transportation's confidence that the trail is coming south. That uh, is the only highway overpass of the railroad that was still in existence. They've all been filled in with gravel and cut box culverts needed to be built. And they widened 109 last year, year before. Um, they didn't fill it and tear it up. They, they spent money on building a new box culvert, wider, and uh, they built a road from 109 down to it so people bicycling can get onto the Eastern Trail. This is another shot of Wells, uh, Unico Pipeline corridor. Another shot. Come down to North Berwick. If you go to downtown North Berwick, you're down by at Fuzzy Seating Hall, Eastern Road South, you come to this missing bridge. John, a little bit louder. Sorry? A little louder. A little louder? Ah. Yeah. Have I put everybody to sleep and nobody can hear me? <laughs> okay. Well, uh, this is Knight's Pond in South Berwick, a beautiful spot. This is the Nonsuch River in South Berwick. Uh, that uh, fencing is to keep people from walking across the pipe or using it to jump into the river. This is the end of the available railroad card on South Berwick. It was turned into Highway 236, and there is no railroad card, however. Uh, I think there, there are some things. Some of these roads are so lightly traveled. The first time I traveled one of them, we met three baby carriages side by side, completely blocking the road. <laughs> uh, then the, uh, the railroad car uh, the, the, uh, was turned into Highway 236 at that point. Uh, it's a high voltage car that parallels the road, it's certainly not the quality of the railroad. It goes, Judy Haley, looking at uh, Google, said, my gosh, it goes all the way to the turnpike. Um, uh, with these power line corridors offer an option, it needs an engineer. My opinion is not worth anything. Nobody would believe me, that's why you have engineers and standards for approval. No. I invite all of you to become members of the Eastern Trail Alliance. Uh, you can do it online. 
easterntrail.org and uh, we will have more information. So I am, uh, that's, that's the end of the slideshow. I don't know that. Do it in 15 minutes. Does anybody care? <laughs> I won. Pretty close. <laughs> uh, so that, now is the time for Bob Hamlin and Chad Ridley to, uh, and I to uh, listen to your comments. You didn't time it. Uh, Tad, 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 Tad and Bob. Joe, one, one question. What is, where is the bridge across Route 1? Oh, across Route 1? Yeah, Route 1. So that's in Saco. Can you show that on your, you uh, read that? Uh, the right corner. Someone was, someone was asking earlier where that was. Uh, let me see. It's up in the right hand corner. There. Very right Oh, no, that's the turnpike. The turnpike bridge is there. Oh, yeah. 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 Like the route one bridge? Oh, the, 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 the route one that I show the pictures of. I don't think I've got a map. Uh, I may have a map. There are maps. Well, it's right where the spur comes on. It's where the spur across. Right after yeah. the spur crosses over the, uh, the spur line that comes on for the exit. Right. 195 goes up the road. Just past that. Yes, thank you. Right there. Yeah. yeah, it's about a quarter mile sure. east of the turnpike spur that goes to Old Orchard. Silver Springs Camp. Yes, actually, that's an easement. What do you say, Dad? Yeah. What's going on, Bob? I'll, I'll stay on this end so I can play with the projector. If, uh, as long as you don't go backwards. Oh, wow. Let me see. Let me see if I can go backwards and call it. Okay, no, wrong one. And there's the North Berwick map, and there's the regional map from South Berwick to uh, Kittery. I think keeping a keeping a map up there is not a bad idea. I think yes. And I did show U.S. bicycle one. That's a permanent trail. It's permanent road approved at the national level. And other states have been approved as well. Bob, please. Uh, you were going to field questions. You've got questions that people have been asking you. Do you do four presentations first? What should we do? No, I'm done with the presentation. Okay. Would you uh, like us to each introduce ourselves? Say a five minute, one minute? What we think of the Eastern Trail? Okay, that's different. Why are you doing what you're doing? I know you can talk for an hour. <laughs> my agent. Um, my name is Tad Rendley. I am the Arundel Town Planner, and I am the president of the Eastern Trail Management District, which goes to show never miss the nominating meeting, because that's what happens to um, But it is a privilege for me to, uh, to be the president of the Eastern Trail Management District. I, I'm filling some huge foot, no, I'm not filling them, I'm actually uh, trying to fill some huge shoes. This is the past president of the Eastern Trail Management District, and John, actually, he is uh, being very uh, very modest here tonight. John is, is the father of the Eastern Trail. Uh, he is the one who came up with the idea of developing the Eastern Trail and had the audacity to walk in people's offices like mine when I was a planner and the economic development director in Old Orchard Beach. Um, my secretary came in and said, there's a guy out here who wants to talk to you about a trail. I said, I've, I've, I've got deadlines, I can't do this. He said, well, he's really insistent. I said, well, tell him he's, tell him he's got five minutes. Two hours later, John left my office, <laughs> and I found myself floating um, a uh, proposition to my select my council, uh, that we join the Eastern Trail Management District, this strange entity of 12 communities along the old Eastern Railroad bed, with the absurd concept of building an off-road trail in the heart of York, and frankly, Cumberland County, the most urbanized sections of it, where all the infrastructure has been removed for that trail. We have a a utility in there that at that time wasn't particularly friendly to the local municipalities or accommodated. And uh, with, the, with the absurd notion of spending untold millions of dollars to build this high in the sky trail. And I found myself making that pitch. I also found myself making that pitch to the Old Orchard Beach Chamber of Commerce, otherwise known as the Lions Den. Um, <laughs> and 
We came out of that meeting in that chamber and decided there was no way in the world they were going to let this trail just drift off and evaporate. Because they saw the incredible opportunity on a number of different fronts. First and foremost, the economic development opportunity, the opportunity to get the kind of demographic um, that is represented by the trail, the kind of people that use the trail into their downtown. They wanted that. They wanted that very badly. Um, second of all, to expand the number of the types of people that they get and the numbers of people that they get to offer a wider range of activities to diversify the product that the town of Old Orchard Beach was offering. And so they became rapid supporters of it and basically forced the council into joining um, this absurd concept. Uh, I think we were the third one to ratify it. You, uh, yes, you we made it legal. We were, we were the Constitution State. Um, we made it legal. Um, what the trail has meant to me, the trail, as I say, is, it was a dream, it was an impossibility, and so many people thought that there's no way you could ever get such a thing to, to happen. And how in the world do you hurt 12 separate communities that range from you know, several thousand people to South Portland, who's you know, one of the larger t cities in the, in the state? How do you get them all in the same room and keep them from keep them all moving in the same direction? And that's been the challenge of the Eastern Trail Management District. But the strangest thing of all is that it's the trail that unites these divergent peoples, these divergent communities, these divergent politics, and there are strange deadlines in this organization to do it, and it's because quite frankly, the trail is a magical place. And we have been lucky, we have been lucky to have diligent people like these two gentlemen and the other volunteers that are behind you to, to do this work. But more importantly, it's really the people like you. It's all the citizens in the, uh, in the communities, big and small, who come to a couple of meetings, and then they bring their friends, they start talking to their counselors, or they talk to their selectmen, and they begin to believe. They begin to think that we can do this. And suddenly, it also helps to have a little bit of uh, transportation enhancement monies, um, which uh, is one of the funding sources that we've used. But uh, we have now, what, 22 miles? 22 miles. 22 miles of off-road um, trail that have been built essentially by the enthusiasm people in the communities and by the leaders in those communities. We have the, what was impossible, a bridge over the turnpike. Easier to develop in Saco Bay than it is to build a bridge over the turnpike. Um, and yet, there it is. And the director of the turnpike wanted to do it. And he figured out a way to do it. It's actually quite a beautiful bridge. Same thing, Route 1, four lanes of Route 1 in Saco. I don't know if you're going to get over that. Um, City of Saco found a way. They floated a bond. They thought it was important enough they floated a half million dollar bond just to build that bridge. And it still in Bob's Thunder, because that's his town. And he's the one who helped engineer that. Um, the point is that the trail is a magical thing. So every single yard we add to it makes it a more magical place. It is it transforms people. Um, Arundel uh, had so many detractors, it was like beating off flies. Our greatest detractors in the right now, quite frankly, are its biggest supporters. Uh, they've gone on the trail, they take their grandkids on it, they take their kids on the trail, they have the school, uh, have classes there, they have botany programs out there, they have, we have races. Carol will tell you, Carol would tell you, we have, we have a, a marathon, an Ironman triathlon that now runs on the trail. It came to Maine because of the trail. Uh, in fact, one of Carol, our executive director's jobs, is, is to manage all the events, which, believe it or not, success has its downside. The success <coughs> is we have this load of people who want to use the trail at the same time. Um, so she has to act like traffic cop and, and get them all organized and uh, make sure that, that, uh, that the events can occur and occur in a, in a way that's reasonable that doesn't impact the communities. And the communities have this incredible, wonderful mile, well, in our case, we have a three mile long park, a linear park, that is basically the spine of my community to branch off all its other recreational aspirations. Be that snowmobile trails, be that equestrian trails, be that a park where you're looking at trying to build a park office. When in my town, I'll tell you honestly, we never thought we would never 
build a park, mentioning the word park was like mentioning <coughs> tax rates, you know, and raising taxes. Um, but, the, but the trail has this magic. It does draw people in. It provides so many benefits to the community. And the community comes out and it, it's theirs. It belongs to them. They want to protect it. And they want to see it expand. And that's why our membership stays with us. Because our other communities who have it want to see it expand. They want to see it expand down here. They want to see North Berwick join. Um, I want this to see this trail go all the way to the Memorial Bridge. So it, it kind of means something to me, and I think it means something to everybody who gets involved in it. I'll talk to which Bob. Thank you, Jim. How do you really feel? <laughs> um, so could the last person out close the door, please? <laughs> uh, Bob Hamlin. Um, I've volunteered for the trail for several years now. Uh, Ted uh, really gave you a terrific overview of uh, the situation with Eastern Trail. Uh, the fact that uh, of the seven communities that the trail has been built in, uh, not one of them has uh, come back to us after the project was complete. Uh, with complaints saying, what have you done? Where, why can't you build this? Uh, we don't like it, take it out. Uh, now, uh, we have heard, why didn't you do this sooner? Uh, can you keep it going so that, <coughs> so that it will uh, run in total through our community and on to the next community? Um, Saka specifically, uh, John lived at the time in Saka, so the first uh, First 80 percent probably of the Eastern Trail's history uh, has been living and operating from Saka. Uh, he knows every councilor in the city of Saka very well. Uh, the mayors, absolutely. John, John is uh, well, as you've seen, uh, one of the, the greatest proponents of the Eastern Trail. He's he's made happen uh, what we've got out there today. Uh, John was the person who uh, suggested, why don't we uh, uh, find some local money so that we can demonstrate to MDOT uh, how important the Eastern Trail is to Saco. And we tried that twice. We uh, uh, tried to sell Saco voters on a half million dollar bond. Uh, and initially it didn't pass. It was up with a couple of other bond issues that particular November. And uh, voters turned I think two out of the three down, John. We got two out of the three bonds that we requested to approve by the one mark. We thought the first was the one that failed, I took it for granted, we can't lose. We don't stay the people for the So we tried a little, a little harder the next time. I remember passing out brochures before at the uh, Thorn Academy football game. And you know, I saw a lot more smiles, and yes, I'd like to take a brochure, and yes, we support the trail than, than any other kind of response. And uh, uh, come election day, it passed uh, about 62 to 38%, so we had our half million dollars. Uh, a couple of years, a year and a half, two years later, that was put to use, and it was uh, considered by Maine DOT uh, to be the local match for the, uh, the Saco Old Orchard Beach section, which is the most recent section to be built. Um, what else do I want to say to you? Uh, people routinely welcome the trail coming to town. Um, one of my favorite things is simply to uh, drive through parts of Saco. The trail is very visible from Main Street, with uh, also Route 1 in Saco. Uh, and uh, nothing makes my day like seeing walkers or bicyclists out on the, that section of the Eastern Trail. You know, I'd like to just point out a few folks, uh, and I know we raised hands earlier, but Carol, Judy, Joe standing at the back of the room, Jim, Deb sitting over here in seats, our, our one part-time paid staffer, and the rest are volunteers uh, uh, that have helped get us to the point where, where we are. I'd like to give, uh, give them a hand if you would. <laughs> Joe thrust into my hands a, uh, a terrific one-pager about 10 minutes ago. I'm not going to read this whole thing to you. 
But Joe has been uh, uh, close with the folks who have just opened uh, the Village Tavern in Kennebunk. And I don't know if anybody has been to eat there or have a drink yet. It's in the old Cummings Market in Kennebunk and uh, just immediately off the Eastern Trail. Uh, opened up about six, within the past six months, Joe. And uh, Joe's given a, a great thumbnail sketch of their experience. Uh, Joe and Judy encountered the uh, owners of this restaurant last August, West Kennebunk had a <coughs> community day. And we had an Easter Trail booth at that event. Uh, they met uh, Rich and Tina, the proprietors of the uh, restaurant. They were searching for the right location to set this up in. And uh, they became aware of the old Cummings Market. They liked the proximity to the Eastern Trail. In fact, they cited that as a major factor influencing their choice of locations. They considered incorporating Eastern Trail into the restaurant's name. Myself, I'm just hoping there is some brewery out there that is going to name it Eastern Trail Ale. I don't ask for much. <laughs> just give me an ale. Uh, Rich Lemoyne, the, uh, the chef and owner of the restaurant, uh, he has an extensive background in food service. After months of construction, uh, the Village Tavern opened in mid-December. My wife and I went about a month ago, and uh, I liked it immediately. We opened the front door, went into the, uh, the foyer, and uh, right on the wall, in a place you cannot miss it, is a, uh, one of these metal signs for the Eastern Trail. I, I knew I was in the right place. And Joe had warned me about that. I'd forgotten all about it until I walked in the door. Tina, uh, uh, Rich's wife, recently said, we're absolutely thrilled to be so busy. We served our 10,000th guest a couple of weeks ago and continue to do extraordinary numbers. They're, they plan to enlarge their parking lot by 20 more spaces. And here's the point, says Joe. They are convinced that their location in West Kennebunk, close to the Eastern Trail, has contributed greatly to their success. So as a planner, uh, that, that's certainly one of the things that I've um, said re repeated times and time again to gatherings such as yourself. Uh, the Easter, well, to begin with, I say this at most of our meetings too, uh, I'd rather be on a bicycle on the Eastern Trail right now. Uh, meetings are not my thing. I, I'm not all that comfortable speaking in front of groups. Uh, but if it means, uh, the opportunity to, uh, to share the story and let you know how successful this thing has been, what it means to each of the communities that it has been built in so far, and also what it can mean in terms of uh, economic development. It's, uh, it's been a win-win to date. Um, we have had uh, folks who are not particularly excited to see the trail coming along. And I think in large part that's due to uh, the existing trail, the old Eastern Rail Line, uh, the existing Unitil gas pipeline. Uh, snowmobilers, hunters, uh, ATV folks, um, horse people have been some of the folks not that excited. Well, we're, we're out on that trail now, we're out on the old Eastern Rail Line, we like it just the way it is. We don't want to lose our trail. And uh, I can appreciate that. That's, that's perhaps one of the most effective counterpoints that we hear about the Eastern Trail coming through. Uh, what I can say to that is that uh, horses are allowed on the trail. Uh, just about a year ago now, we had a few meetings where we entertained uh, close to two dozen horse people at a few Eastern Trail Management District meetings. And uh, they made their point very eloquently. These, uh, these horse people, mostly women, uh, said that we use sections of the trail down in the Kennebunk Arundel area now. Uh, we don't want to lose that uh, ability. So we tried this on a trial basis. and. Uh, so far, it's worked out very well. Uh, horse people uh, are generally well-mannered, uh, know what they want, articulate, and uh, 
and I think mindful of the trail too. They recognize that riding horses uh, at a fast clip or riding horses when the, the trail is muddy or wet uh, isn't going to be good for anybody, certainly not the trail. Uh, so I think they've been very respectful of the trail and uh, so far the, this trial period has worked out very well. Um, much of the trail is on the old eastern rail line, uh, in fact a heck of a lot of it is. Uh, much of it is on the Unitil natural gas pipeline. And as such, the Eastern Trail is a, is a tenant, and uh, Unitil is the landlord. So we've had to abide by their rules and regulations. Uh, if the pipeline, well, tell me tell me this. Does the pipeline run through North Berlin? Yes. Yes. It does. Yeah. Uh, you've got right on that line, right on that, line. Right on that, line. that loop, that uh, green line, that is the Unitil pipeline. So that, that will be the off-road oh, oh, track. For a great part of it, though, in North Berwick. Sorry? For a great part of it in North Berwick, it actually runs off. The gas line runs off the side of the railway. It actually runs about 20, no, 15 to 20 feet. Yeah, it, 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 it tends to all the way going to the east because when they put their equipment down it to maintain it, they, if they drive over it, there's always a risk of bending it, damaging it. So they keep their uh, trucks. And I know. I know. Parts that I've ridden on mountain by mountain bike have been that there is there is distance between the actual road bed and the old and the gas line. The gas line. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, the, the rail bed is uh, 66 feet wide. I mean, that's the legal limit. But they, I think, they keep about 30 feet clear of uh, trees and brush. So I think uh, each of the three of us could go on until 11 o'clock. But uh, you've heard in a nutshell what's going on here, and uh, perhaps you've seen something in the local newspaper or the Portland paper over time. We think we got a pretty good thing going here. We'd like to push the trail all the way down to Kittery and uh, to uh, allow the East Coast Greenway to uh, uh, to continue shooting on down through New England and eventually to Florida. Uh, but at least some of you folks are probably curious about this or that or the other thing. Um, we'd be glad to field any questions that you have. Tim? Uh, what has been the success of um, using the Unitel pipeline to North Pearl? Is that going to happen? What's the, what's the progress there? Uh, well, I'd say my concern is that uh, after two years, Supporting the Eastern Trail Management District, North Berwick, uh, stop. No, 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 Unitil. What's, oh, what's Unitil? the progress with uh, using the pipeline? Uh, Unitil has been, at some levels, a little concerned that it's going to consume resources. But during construction, the uh, our cost of building the trail is to uh, pay Unitil to have their safety engineers inspect the work, approve the design, so there's a cost, but it's reimbursed as part of the contract uh, construction cost. Uh, and it does, if, if you or I, as a manager in a company, went to a boss and said, I'd like to take uh, 10 hours a week to support a trail that this uh, group is going to put through on our land. Your boss has given you a list of things to do. Building a trail is not one of them. So it requires going to the chairman of the board and president, where they appreciate the goodwill of uh, the public. And uh, it took a long time to figure that out, longer than it should have. But when I wrote a letter to the chairman of the board of Nysource that owned Columbia Gas, that owned Greenwich State Gas, uh, took a, I was very careful writing that letter. He called up the president of Columbia Gas and told her to make it happen. And uh, we do, we have, you have to have friends and customers. That helps too. Mm -hmm. yeah. Do you expect there'll be any roadblocks? Roadblocks mm -hmm. going, I mean, in the, in the process of building a trail through North Berlin. Do you expect any roadblocks that we need to be working on getting through? Or is this all pretty, you've already got it pretty well cleared and planned? No, 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 no engineering has been done.
know, it's, uh, but the roadblock, the two kinds of roadblocks, closing a highway and then dealing with an organization that doesn't want a trail. Okay, well, let me, let me ask it a different way. <laughs> Rather than starting in the middle and starting to work our way out and trying to make this happen, what's the best approach that we could take right now towards getting it, getting it going? Well, it would sure help if North Berwick voters ask the selectmen to return to membership in the Eastern Trail Management District. Carroll is so overloaded with managing 22 miles of trail, the activities, the you know, having to talk to the ward service when somebody's doing something out there that they shouldn't do. Uh, so it, we need more support, staff support. They go forward every time a mile opens. That's one more mile that Carol has to worry about. One, one thing that may help you, I've, I've spoken to Dwayne, I've given him the posters, tell him uh, that we're having a meeting. And he, I think the selectmen would like to have been here tonight, but they had another meeting because of the snow storm last Tuesday and pushed them to a required meeting for the time. I think otherwise some of them would have been here. I don't think there's any real opposition. I think that our selectmen and our town manager are sitting back and saying, this is what the people want. You know, if the people want something, we've got to show them somehow that we're in support. I don't think, they're not in opposition. I think they're pretty much neutral. Uh, we're waiting to hear from the townspeople, like the arguments that we heard here from, from Tad, for instance, you know, the snow peelers and, you know, we're using, the, we're using that right away now, legally or illegally, people are using it. And people are afraid of being tossed off of their, their right away, and I think that's part of the opposition. I know, uh, some, of, some other people here may have like, we have questions and answers, but I don't think that the selectmen, basically they need to be informed and let know that there is a movement of, how, how do you do that? I don't know how you do that. I think that uh, these gentlemen here can perhaps help us. Well, one, one thing I'd say, uh, we'd be nowhere without Main DOT. Uh, the, the federal transportation enhancement money uh, that has been funneled from Washington, D.C. through Augusta down to the Eastern Trail, oh, what are we up around? Seven or eight million dollars, perhaps? Ten. We're at ten. Ten. To get us to this, to get us to this point, uh, occasionally we're approached by volunteers. Can we help uh, build the Eastern Trail? It's not really that kind of trail. Uh, it, it's very much a trail that you hire a firm like the Brown Industrial Group or Shaw Brothers. Uh, it, it's it's that kind of trail. It's it's uh, it's close to a road building project, to tell you the truth. Um, I say that your town uh, keeps an eye on the uh, transportation, on the main DOT quality communities funding. Uh, there are a few different uh, activities that happen under that umbrella of quality communities. Uh, one of them is the pot of money, federal money that is made available to trails uh, statewide. Uh, the Eastern Trail is one of three trails of statewide significance, so we're, we're very visible on MDOT's radar screen. Uh, currently, Kennebunk and Wells have pending TE applications with MDOT. They should hear in May or June as to whether they're going to get design uh, funding for, for sections of trail within their towns. So there will be an, an upcoming TE cycle, and uh, that's when you want to be in line, uh, get your hands on an application, and uh, get, it, get it in the stack of applications that will end up in Augusta. Joe? Could, could you explain what TE is? I think maybe that, you know, that gets lost in the thing. Yeah, you know, I, I think it's actually transitioned. It has been TE, or transportation enhancement, uh, funding for the past several years. Uh, I think under the new federal regime, it's no longer TE. It, it is transitioned into something else. Absolutely, but it's still called a trans transportation enhancement because the name is so long. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, it's, it's simple. Fed simply federal money. 
uh, and this is portioned out to every state in the union, and then it's up to the states to administer uh, this program, and uh, TE is specifically for uh, uh, alternative transportation, uh, bicycle and pedestrian trails, uh, among other things. If, if I could answer, I, I'm sorry, sorry, I know you pinned your hand up, but I just wanted to follow up to this gentleman's uh, question. You, you asked, what, what can we do? What are the roadblocks? I would say right now, probably one of the first things you, I would really advise you as citizens of North Road to do would be to get your select when you rejoin the Eastern Trail Management District. Why? Um, because you don't want to pursue building the trail in your town by yourselves. You rally, really will succeed much better if you're in the umbrella of the Eastern Trail Management District. First of all, we're, we're, we have a track record. Second of all, we have a track, track record with DOT. We will also assist you in, in producing the, uh, the, the grant helping you put together the grant. Second thing that's really important is to be part of the Eastern Trail, the whole trail as being part of the, the Eastern Trail Management District. That gives you points with DOT. As Bob said, we're one of three trails of statewide significance. Our goal is to become a trail of national significance. Um, and being in that status, quite frankly, all the communities are involved because of the number of communities and the number of people as one unit. Um, we're going to score higher in the grant application. So North Burwood would score much higher being a member of the Eastern Trail Management District and being part of the Eastern Trail uh, than they would if you went along. And second of all, you really don't want to deal with the Unitel by yourselves. <laughs> really, honestly, right. yeah, you really don't. Want to. <laughs> But if we could, uh, this gentleman's been at his hand up the whole time. Um, but, and I apologize for for about many years. What other towns between here and Portland are not part of the Trail Alliance system? What other towns are not part of it? Are there any other towns? North Berwick is one, and I believe Elliot is the other one. Yeah. Wells was dropped out for a year, and then they came back. Um, you guys in the hole, in the middle. Um, so, we don't want you to be in the hole in the middle. If you've got a, a great, you've got the great section of trail, like a great section of the off road and on the uh, section of the trail, and uh, um, we want to see it, we would love to see it go through North Berwick. What's the reason that North Berwick stopped being a member? I can't answer that. I, 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 can't, I, I, I came down here uh, to your polling place probably 10, 12 years ago with literature, collecting names from people who were interested, and two people came by and blasted me and said never were they going to allow the Eastern Trail in this town to take away their ATV trail. I've heard people say they don't want it to go by the sanitary the wastewater treatment plant because it'll smell. You should go, you should go by the one in Portland. Uh, I've led full moon hikes by it. So actually, I haven't. I've been down by yours. Place I didn't think it smelled at all, but it must be a bad days when it does. Uh, What's the cost? Well, the cost. The cost per mile on no, average of membership. Oh, five thousand dollars a year per town. Is that a possible reason that they're not doing it? Huh? Is that a reason that Burry didn't join? I think they don't uh, appreciate it. Probably be part of it. Yeah, I think that's certainly part of it. The the, the grassroots support has not been seen. The people who on ATVs don't want it. They they've been visible. Uh, I don't know. I. I Often mystified. Back a few years ago, when during a town meeting, that was the first question that came up: Was will I be able to ride my ATV on it? Of course, he'd be like to at that time it was illegal. To that. No, I think it, it, I think that was just before the law. But it was illegal because it was posted. It, it is illegal to operate an ATV on property anywhere in Maine today if it isn't a marked ATV trail. 
or you have a note in your pocket from the landowner. Uh, I mean, that law was, the law was changed in 2005. I visited the Snowmobile Club up in Sanford where the first public meeting was held at uh, the Snowmobile Club's outreach because their trails were being torn up off season and uh, they were one of the organizations. ATV Maine uh, was an organization that said if we don't control our members, uh, we're not going to be able to operate anywhere. I've been down the Downey Sunrise Trail, it does allow ATVs, and uh, they pull over, slow down, wave, smile. I've had people look at me a little nervous. <laughs> like, am I going to get in a fight? Oh, no, not there, wonderful. But down here, every, almost every ATV operator is a lawbreaker. And if you have that mentality, uh, I broke the law as a kid. I used to cut down trees in my neighbor's woods. I thought that was public property. I found out I was wrong. <laughs> I think ATV owners in that same perspective think that's a public <coughs> trail, and, and the gas company has not given permission. That's it. If I may just follow up, the biggest reason is the gas company says no. The gas company says you will not ride ATVs, you will not ride snowmobiles on our trail. Period. If we catch you out there, we will prosecute. And they do. The thing is, they don't go out and catch you very often, but they're becoming more and more conscious about the amount of riding on there, and, and quite frankly, they don't really care about the cultural value of, of snowmobiling or ATVing. They care about their pipeline, and if you've been reading the newspapers, in some places that pipeline isn't really as deep as it should be. Um, one of the things the trail does do is the trail puts a good amount of overburden on the, on the uh, either on the pipeline or it provides an access road next to the pipeline and preserves the pipeline. That's one of the biggest ways we sell our, uh, our, our trail to the Intel. We say we are actually improving the conditions out here. We're making it safer, we're putting eyes in the field, uh, we're making it easier for you guys to access your pipeline, and we're providing cover. Um, Unitel someday may change their mind about snowmobiles. I don't know about ATVs. I'm not sure they'll ever change their mind about ATVs. Snowmobiles, we've run into a buzz song on that with them before, but uh, because we did approach them about snowmobiles. Snowmobiling is an important part of, of, of main culture. It's an important part of normal. And I had some flack on it, too. Um, but we have to bring the, the, uh, the, the gas company along. Our hope is someday, I got in trouble last time I said this. Uh, our hope is someday that uh, we might be able to change their mind. The more communities we have, in our fold, you know, arguing for uh, an expanded use of the trail, the better off we are. Okay. Yeah. There's a question about Berwick's attitude toward the Eastern Trail, I think for many years was a function of the fact that there was the turnpike. And people in Berwick, people in Wells, uh, people in West Canbuck said, they're never gonna come over the, uh, the turnpike, they're never gonna build the Eastern Trail down here. Are you crazy? So I think people south of the turnpike, uh, towns down here, sort of felt, what's the point of belonging to an organization? It's never really going to build a trail down here. Well, what happened was we got the turnpike bridge built, some, to, even to our surprise. And West Kennebuck sure changed fast. Wells suddenly said, they're knocking on our door. And right now, as, as uh, they said, we've got the uh, West Kennebuck and Wells with a proposal trying to get money to build the, the trail right to North uh, Berwick's... Uh, Knocking on your door. Yep. And as a matter of fact, in negotiations, talking with the guy up in Augusta who uh, allocates MDOT funds, he wants to go into Berwick. And in fact, he may, it's, it's, it, it may be hard for Wells and Kennebunk to sell that portion of the trail, unless it goes through North Berwick. In other words, there's an incentive for us to come down here and talk to you people. Uh, there's certainly an incentive for Ken West Kennebunk and Wells to have you guys get on board. That's what Ted was talking about, about this organization here, uh, the towns working together. Uh, and that's kind of where we are at this point. I think it might be an easier sell to town once they see it getting closer, because 
that was, I think the, the whole thing was that we were kind of, I think it was kind of that we were on the corner, it's like coming from either direction, that well, we were paying $5,000 a year for how many years, and it's, and it's a long ways from either end coming in. I mean, I remember that, what you said, that, that was, other than there was the ATV argument, but that was also that's a one point of the that was brought up yeah. is, 